uh, first of all, I, I hope you can hear me okay. And then second, uh, a slight warning, my, my Zoom has crashed already two times. So I, I hope it keeps up. It reconnects after one minute or so. So I will be back in any case, uh, but just so you know. Um, yes, uh, it, it has been a uh, very worthwhile to, to work on this and discuss these issues within the uh, drafting group. Um, we, as, as COSIR representing the, um, the medtech industry, uh, have, of course, experience with uh, AI in, in healthcare and also with the regulatory framework. As you mentioned, uh, there is GDPR, uh, which relates specifically to automated decision making. But also with the, the upcoming medical device regulation, AI in itself is not new and is being considered as, as medical software. Um, so there are already a, a lot of rules uh, that, that take into consideration uh, some of the ethical aspects that have been lined out and discussed within this paper and also with, within other papers and initiatives. Um, and, and in that sense, that, that, is, that is really encouraging. Uh, on the other hand, of course, there, there are discussions we know at European level at a more horizontal AI framework. And um, you indicated the at least the initial views from the Commission on, on the risk-based approach. Um, we support a risk-based approach, but uh, as indicated in this document, it, it's more multidimensional, as you indicated. Um, there can be, of course, applications in itself that ha are quite low risk, but they're only being applied in, in a high risk sector. Um, and, and even there, the question is how, how you would define a high risk sector, because um, even if we, I, I think until a few years ago, nobody would call the advertising uh, sector a high risk sector, whereas we see that now, uh, for instance, through, through Facebook or, or the fake news discussions and infodemics, it gets a whole new, um, there's a whole new light on these things. Uh, and uh, what what we feel is that there, there's definitely a need to, to look in, into the risk-based approach. Um, we, of course, are, are used to work on, on, on a product level from a product compliance perspective. Uh, and there, the, the medical device regulation already has a tiered system, which is risk-based, depending on the significance of um, the um, decision of the software, the support of the software, uh, within the overall uh, clinical decision and of course the uh, possible uh, impact it may have um, so so that is already there and uh, for instance we know that discussions within the oecd that is also looking into classification of ai they're also looking in in, in different dimensions they look towards the context what is the, the data that is being used and and the input they look uh, what is the um, specific AI technology that is being used. And I think that that is something which has been um, on the light in, in the current discussions. And then the fourth one, they also, of course, look to, to the output. Um, and uh, maybe I, I would like to just pick up, up this one thing about the specific AI technology that is being used because we are discussing about ethical issues. Um, and some of the AI models or technologies that are being used are can be considered more or less a black box solution, whereas others are, are more open in the kind of understanding or the kind of explainability you can do around such systems. Um, in, in the UK earlier this year, uh, and, and maybe uh, Ben would have some, some input on that, um, the, the ICO, and I believe in, in cooperation with Alan Turing Institute, they have looked at explainability of AI and for instance, they, they have different approaches as to how to explain AI, whether that would be, for instance, explaining what the, what the impact would be or how the input would change the, the output uh, or, or what were kind of like the, the most relevant factors that would um, uh, affect the, the uh, decision making. Um, and, and there was clearly this kind of flexibility uh, as to uh, depending on which type of AI technology you're using that you could then assess or, or, or make a decision from your side what would be the most appropriate model to, to explain this. Um, we also have discussions around auditing and bias. Uh, and and th there's a certain issue there as well because we, we now see that more and more systems uh, and certainly when we talk about um, bigger 
um, collections of data that more and more use is being made of federated systems, where in principle the data stays where it is and, and the, uh, the algorithm is, 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 is moving around. Uh, but of course, that, that will uh, bring up some questions in terms of to what extent you can audit the real uh, raw data because you don't have direct access to that. Um, so I, I think that there are many detail, detailed questions around how to, to tackle this in practice. And um, as mentioned, the medical device regulation provides, uh, in, in our view, a quite clear legal framework for this. Of course, this does not cope with the, with the system, the overall system where the AI is, is integrated in. Um, and then um, my uh, final point is that um, there, there are always trade-offs when it comes to, to ethical issues. Uh, for instance, if we talk about fairness or, or accuracy, and I think the, uh, the current COVID-19 crisis is, is a good uh, demonstration of that, uh, where we see that healthcare systems are under pressure. Uh, if you would have um, um, decision-making support uh, system w within the hospital that does triage, um, then it will depend on, on the deployer, on, on, on the hospital, or maybe on, on, on government policy as to who will receive care first or who will be prioritized. So that is not something which is necessarily uh, put in by default by, by the developer, by the manufacturer, but that can be changed throughout the process. Um, so I, I think there's a kind of shared responsibility among different parties. And uh, I'm glad to see that this was also being uh, picked up in some of the discussions at the European Parliament. I, I'll leave it at that as, as a first um, reflection on, on these issues. Thank you. Thank you very much, Danny. These are really very important point. We'll get back to that, I'm, I'm sure. Um, so uh, let me now uh, move to uh, address uh, Wendy, Wendy Arab. Wendy wasn't a member of the groups, so uh, she's, and she's director of the European Cancer Leagues. So she certainly have uh, a lot to say about uh, uh, these issues about AI and healthcare and maybe provide us uh, a informed opinion. Yeah, right. um.